Ubes. Hi. Hello and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Beep, to beep, us. Beep, 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 beep. It is our one year anniversary. It is. Not yes. when this comes out, but today when we're recording, recording September 28th. Yeah. So you just get to kind of fill that out with us. Yeah. As we are celebrating. I knew I was coming up and then today in my like time hop and stuff, oh, I yeah. started getting a bunch of like uh, screenshots from our Instagram and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, is it today? And so then I went and checked. Yeah. The, the things we should know. It's Time fine. evades. <laughs> Time evades the best of us. It's and you know what? We'll probably still not post about it on our Instagram tonight. I probably knew. I mean, I knew. <laughs> right? <laughs> Today. I mean, we could still maybe scratch something up. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it is that time of the year, isn't it? Mm-hmm. This is about I had a 2021 feeling. I was time. like, it's somewhere around here. We dropped mm-hmm. three episodes at once. Mm-hmm. Looking at it, it says that The Devil Made Me Do It is our first episode, but we definitely but recorded The Exorcist first. First, yes. So in our mind, Devil it's Made Me Do It's the second one. Mm-hmm. So... Speaking of the devil made me do it. We're going to be talking about The Conjuring. Yeah. The 2013 Conjuring, the uh, first movie that brought us into the Conjuring universe. Yes. Um, Which has spawned so many films. Yes. Uh, A lot of them good. Mm Mm-hmm. Some of them not. I enjoy them. I mean, for the most part. Yeah, I agree, though. Some of them not. Yeah. Um, But this one. one was bad. It wasn't. No, it wasn't good. Yeah. I honestly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I also liked vibe with it. Most of there the were Annabelle's. some like key point. There were some moments in that movie though that was that were good. It's just mm-hmm. like overall, it's kind of just it was um, a letdown. It was like a subpar, you know, hit. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the Annabelle movies pretty good. I remember uh, Annabelle uh, creation. That one really well. Even the first Annabelle. That's the one where you're little, like on the farm with them, right? Yeah. And we yeah, get yeah. that scene the of the girls and the orphanage, demon, like puking girl, in the orphan girls in the barn. Yeah. Going, <laughs> Um, that black sludge into so her. there was a part in love that. the first Annabelle that really kind of like spooked me when it was the uh, we're not talking about that but whenever the demons like going across the hall and the hallways in the hotel that they're mm. staying in and like real fast and whatever and it's down it was the, the part going up the stairs yeah for yeah. me um, because I had a anecdote with that one but I'm saving that for when gotcha. we actually cover that film but um, also the second one just creation really gave me a good spook I also watched that one alone. Um, yeah, I went to the movie theaters and watched watch the first one by myself, and it was spring. Well, okay, I'll save it. I'm going to yeah. save it. Save it for the episode, because <gasps> we will eventually cover those, uh, especially since we will n- now be covering The Conjuring, and our next episode, we're going to be con- con- oh, covering. God. covering The Conjuring <laughs> 2, um, yes, which is the follow-up to this movie. Yes. Um, and so, yeah. yeah Maybe in, they in weren't the as good. Did you know that... This well, movie was 20 years in the making. Uh, no. Basically, I didn't pick the, that one up on my study. Um, basically, the whoever is the. Oh, goodness. Why did I not prepare this when I decided? Who? The Who the Ha. Producers? I can't, it's a really long it, name. Okay. It's something with a hyphen. Oh, it's also one of the highest grossing. Tony like, De Rosa Grund? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Derosa Grund. Yes. They, he was shown or listened to one of the audio recordings mm-hmm. from Carolyn, um, the original like actual person from the original the family. Yeah. Yeah. And by Ed Warren, I believe. And after that, he was like, "I want to make this film." But then he tried for like fifteen years, and it didn't yeah. get picked up. And he just continued trying, and he never gave up hope, and yeah. eventually it did. <clears throat> well, because by that point, too, they had already had stories or, or movies made uh, following the Amityville horror mm-hmm. story, which wasn't necessarily linked to them, but also was a case that they had worked on. You yeah. know what I mean? Which, and they mention it in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, at the end, do. there's a few little nods, nods, because that's how we open up The Conjuring 2. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, because they're coming off of that. 
Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm so excited. We've been very excited to cover these. This is actually this, these two episodes are going to be our, our picks, Mm -hmm. um, because we really do enjoy the franchise. Um, it's directed by, uh, James Wan, um, and was released in a lot of movies. Um, and like has a good range of movies as well. Not necessarily just in like the horror scope. Mm -hmm. And then we, it was released in 2013. Yeah. Um, and so I remember going to see it like mm-hmm. my uh, I guess I would have been. Yeah. Like my freshman year like of college. In right between. out of high school. Yeah. Freshman yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Going into my sophomore year. I remember seeing the trailer for this and it was one of the first ones in a long time that made me be like, oh, fuck. Because that little the clap clap game. Yeah. And they show just like one of the parts where it's like the hands come out and just clap clap. And, that From was the like, and then it goes like black. And I was like, ah! yeah. It's very scary. Yeah. Even so watching it in. now. I know. Even it was a little one, eerie. Even the, I watched it yesterday and a little bit today as well. To kind of like a little go over. And even today, like as I was doing things, I was honestly like just because my mind had been like tapped into the vibes. Mm-hmm. I was like, the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, the one. I was a little creeped out today. A little paranoid. The one with Rory whenever um, the mom, Carolyn, is on the stairs after she's been like you know, push down the basement stairs and stuff. Oh, yeah. And she gets back up. That one, like, still gives me, like, he's shivers. Like, do you want to play a game? Yeah. He's yeah. like, do you want to play hide and clap? Yeah. And then right after his and little And then the match out, goes out, whoosh, mm-hmm. it goes dark, and all you hear is just her just, like, screaming and, like, the door just, like, in the banging. Not opening. Yes. Because also where his hands came from, she was backed up against a door, so there was no humanly possible way mm-hmm. for his hands to have come from there. And it's still like, I'm like, "Mm, no, that's scary. It's Mm -mm. truly terrifying. It is. But we will get to that right now. Let's get to the beginning. Yes. Which we also get an introduction to something that is we've been already just talked about is Annabelle. Annabelle. Literally. I almost brought my dolls Annabelle in the rain, but I didn't want to leave them sitting in a hot car all day while I was at work. And time uh, did not allow you to go there and pick them up after work and come here. Yeah. Yeah. They would have been real grumpy and. Annabelle we don't want like, grumpy spirits on a recording. No, we don't. Annabelle's probably one of my more, I feel mm-hmm. like, actively haunted dolls. And so I try to avoid angering her. I don't move her ever without, like, speaking to her and, like, asking her if it's okay mm-hmm. first. No, I fully um, believe. I feel like we have a nice mutual respect now. Everything that you're saying right now because they give a little haunt vibes. <laughs> they do. Yeah, Annabelle gave me, she gave me bad vibes for, like, two weeks. I left her in the office at work. Because someone had gifted, who worked with me, gifted her to me. And mm-hmm. um, I was like, uh, this is terrifying. And then finally I brought her down. And <laughs> as I came down the elevator, because I like left after mm-hmm. close, and I came down the elevator and I rocked around the corner. And there's a bar underneath where I work. And um, it, the song that like I always feel like somebody's watching, watching me, me. Oh, no. was playing That's a sign. as I turned the corner. And I was like trying to take a little video of us like walking down the yeah. stairs like, hey, I'm bringing this really scary doll home. And then That's super funny. I hear this ironic in my face. Comedy like, gold. Drops. And I was mm-hmm. like, nope. <laughs> I freaked out. Um, Yeah. No. When I went to go feed the kitties, they um, were kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. They're not yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Well, I mentioned that not that one people. arm doll was like on the ground, right? But then there was also a clown that was on the on the floor. Oh, really? Yeah, but I picked him up and put him back up. I don't okay, think I put him you. in the right spot. Oh, but, I never so noticed. So I don't know if you noticed. Being there was disturbed. a cl- Yeah. So there was a clown that was on the floor as well, but I put him back up there. Do you remember what? what it was yellow was? yellow pants I'm getting and like a red hair. That's all I'm getting. I don't know. Like one of the raggedy ants? I don't From know. the kitchen? No, it was like no, it was in by like when you walk into your living room when you mm. turn left, there's like a little bookshelf there, and there's all these little and there's just a lot of clown ones, and one of them was on the floor. <gasps> they were crawling on the bookshelf even then. I Those don't know, fuckers. Get onto the kitties. My bad. Oops, I'm a snitch. I bought a spray bottle and I felt too bad I couldn't spray them. <laughs> but I also believe it was Annabelle. I was like, I can't. Annabelle was over there bitch slapping the little clown dogs. Probably that's why her arm because was on that the floor. arm that was on the ground yep. is. Annabelle doesn't have arms, mm. and but she has one of them. It's just like one of the other ones is detached, and you put it across the other way of the room. It's a decoration. Yeah, <laughs> and it ended up like on in the, the table middle of the well, the middle of the living room. She was trying to get that arm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's trying Without to become whole again. Mm-hmm. Ah! So Anyways, we're talking Annabelle. about, <laughs> um, like literally ten minutes in, um, 
we're talking about Annabelle because Debbie, who is a nurse and she has a friend and they are all with this another roommate talking to Ed and Lorraine about mm. uh, the doll um, who looks really fucking creepy, which actually isn't at all. like the real Annabelle, yeah. which is just like a raggedy Ann yeah, doll. Yeah, she's a raggedy Ann. Um, they're which talking I have about, some yeah, they're talking about how she has been basically kind of like harassing um leaving little notes mm-hmm. d- um what they're do describing you call it? all the horrors mm-hmm. that have happened yeah. she's moving vandalizing throughout the, house. the house yeah graffitiing like yeah. coloring Breaking with everything. red crayons all over everything and mm-hmm. making little notes that say miss me yeah and it's like nah because they had uh essentially talked to like a clairvoyant or someone and said and i'm like this clairvoyant yes, need to be fired yeah li- <laughs> and told them that oh this little girl named annabelle died there and it's just her and she wants to be your friends and so they allowed her to come into this doll but what it really was was a demonic entity mm-hmm. as ed and lorraine are telling them because they gave it, it was a conduit yes exactly your lives. and so now it's now leeching onto Best. them because Demons do not possess things; they possess people. And it was so, after you, exactly. And th- I remember their faces in the, the part of this part of the movie, and they were very like, "Oh shit!" Well, like, because at that point too, as we find out later, and if you know anything about the Annabelle story, the male roommate who was there mm-hmm. had been like physically assaulted, mm-hmm. I believe too. He was having a bunch of scratch marks on him and stuff like that, yeah. and. I, Spooky shit. I feel like he was maybe even more Ooh. targeted than them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and then as we see, you can never throw a dolly out that's haunted and <laughs> expect to yeah. just move on with your throw life. Throw it in the trash, literally. That bitch came right back. And the, the way knocks, that she knocked dun, so dun, heavy. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-huh. And it came in threes. Yeah. Which is dun, dun, we dun. talk we talk on that later. Yep. But it's it's um yeah, it's really scary. And when they come out and they're both looking in the hallway and then they, they go and they look up and it's like, Oh shit and then they get the other knocks like well on the one, door right next to the other girl that's which is the, the closet. Me. me too. Like, ah! And I have already <laughs> seen this movie. And yeah, so when they open up the front door, that one girl, because I forget her name, but forget she picks up the note that says miss me again mm-hmm. and then we get those studs at the other door and it's annabelle in the fucking closet yeah. even though after they had already thrown her out it, it hard pass yeah and so i was just like oh shit this bitch is back mm-hmm. and she is not playing games that's anymore. why i like i don't try every time that i just be polite to my mm-hmm. dolls because some people have been like oh you should sage and i'm like i don't want to fucking piss them off by like saging and then them being like what if they've been dormant and when you start doing that as when they like oh what they awake yeah and then they're just mad like I, nope so instead i just talk very politely to annabelle i wave to her occasionally and like how you talk to like children like mm-hmm. a, like infants because you're supposed to talk to them like adults not like but like I, mean, I, I say, still, I'm going to move you mm-hmm. right now. Is that okay? I'm going to slap you across the face. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I um, would never. JK. She does, I think, get kind of grumpy when I leave, though. The cats uh, definitely threw her arm across. Mm-hmm, like, I 1,000% mm-hmm. believe they totally. did that. But then there was another time when I left for California for a while. And my record cabinet there, I was laying. I had just gotten back and had been there maybe 10 minutes. And I was laying, like, on the couch on my stomach. Kitty was with me. She was on the couch too Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden one of the speaker covers on my record cabinet just flies off and then it like smacks into the ground so hard sounds like something was either like super like annoyed that you took so long to get back or was annoyed that you were back oh yeah maybe Mm. they're like no we can't have fun damn it yeah literally (laughs) i did tell them i was like i'm sorry for leaving it gives very toy story like all the dolls just like yeah as soon as you walk in they're like fucking shit Oh God, my house would be like literally a party. Can you imagine like in the be- it's, like it's, little it's, side it's, story it's, and like there's like three dolls behind that little thing that you didn't see and they're like holding them back and she's like, fuck this bitch, fuck her, fuck her. And can she you just go like, to sleep please hit. so we can get to our spot? And the outcome was literally just that thing popping off and then they're like, oh shit. And they like, and they like chloroform him and then they like have to take him back later. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. I'd watch that movie. It's a little like, I can see like claymation. Yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. cute. Um, um, and so, yeah, <laughs> all this shit is going on while they're talking to Ed and Lorraine. And that's whenever we get that this is actually them talking to an auditorium full of students. And we get our first sighting of Cutie Patootie Drew. 
Yeah. Oh, my favorite. I yeah, love he's played by so Shannon much. Cook. I've seen him in a few other things before this, but I've always had like a crush on him. Super Me too. cute. Yeah. So 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 and such a good character. Mm-hmm. Um, I and so him so hard with Brad. Oh, with Brad. Wait, who was Brad? Wait, cop. Which one was? Brad? Oh, the cop. Oh yeah, because there was that like they sexual give heavy tension. Heavy sexual tension. I've, mm-hmm. I know I've said this before, but they're my favorite couple. Like I just mm-hmm. they're a powered couple. And so that they I were would very watch. Cute. They'd be very cute. Yeah. Their show. Aw, like a sitcom, mm-hmm. like WandaVision, but. I love the sass between the two of them. Like at the end, yeah. whenever he has this whole fucking face bit off and he's like, did a draft do that? And I was like, just bone each other already. Yeah. It's a good callback to you to like the conversation they had earlier. Mm-hmm. And also just like throughout the whole time <laughs> they have answer. Even when they first meet each other, he's like, you know, you can't shoot ghosts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it. so. He and looks that's, so whenever Obsessed. the okay for the next 30 minutes caitlin go ahead <laughs> let's just talk about go ahead go for it talk no about there's Trey. so many times in here where i'm just like oh, Drew's Drew. cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or like oh i loved her so and please much. don't die yeah <laughs> um and so which is what was so shocking about the third one is oh he yeah was fucking not good mm-hmm. in it i was like yo you were such a great actor like so effortlessly and then in the third one it was like did they give it you faltered. like one minute to prepare? Who like, knows? Who knows? Um, I don't know. And so we go into it and they're also kind of talk like they all these students raise like their hands for questions and everybody is asking like, well, one student essentially is just like, well, what what do you call yourselves? And that's mm-hmm. when they're like, we're this, we're that. And then they're like, we're kooks, you know, yeah, because that's what Kooks. people call them because they don't necessarily are don't get believed that you know everything they say is like really true and yeah they were as under a, of fact. a lot of scrutiny, scrutiny. but yeah, then good word then lorraine comes in with a we nice are. solid line we prefer to be known simply as ed and lorraine warren mm-hmm. yeah. and it's like so good and then we get a little title card it's so good yeah it gives conjuring. me the exorcist yeah mixed with a little of star wars yeah yeah <laughs> And it says, um, basically, it also tells us a little bit, like, Lorraine is clairvoyant. Ed is the only non, like, um, religious, I guess, or something demonologist recognized by the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And then the font, when it comes in, so good. And then we uh, pan to 1971, Harrisville, Rhode Island. Yes. And we are (laughs) arriving with the family Mm -hmm. to the the house, which actually looks nothing like the actual house. The parents. Yeah, looks oh, something the like people. the actual house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, the casting was fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, the house is very different. Mm. Yeah, no. Did There's you see a... pictures of it? Uh, no, I, no, 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 oh, no, I didn't see it. No. I'll show you. So show me, please. But I will be continuing to talk as they are moving into this new house. Oh, okay. This picture has, it. Yeah. maybe it gets supposedly real, has Bathsheba yeah. in it. Well, it's a, the very plantation style type of house, like very old school type of house here in America. Oh, here we go. Here's um, what it looked like in the 70s when they were living in it. Ah. V different. Ooh. And Those type of houses, the there's just house. too many rooms. Too many rooms for a murder to happen in. I'm yeah. uncomfortable. I'm asking questions. I want this top house. I'm digging. The whole time I'm like I am this. looking behind floorboards and like <laughs> the wood on the wall because you I'm like, there's a body. Secret passageway in that hiding spot. On faster. Amazon, I'm sure that there's something to like look for like skeleton remains behind walls. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to find it. A stud finder. Mm. It just, just it doesn't be <laughs> literally. And I'm like knocking everywhere. Found one. Um, and so, yeah. And they are. <laughs> Moving in, they are getting to walk in. The mm, they have a dog named Sadie, and yeah. she is getting. Aww, Sadie. I know, which is uh, I live with an. I also live with a dog named Sadie, and um, she's getting really bad vibes. She was from like, this house. No. she will not enter the we premises. Trust your pets, mm-hmm, truly, because they really pick up on like the energy that we don't. That was what, like, whenever that thing flew off, Kitty was also freaked out, and I was mm. like, oh, "Fuck, she's scared. I should probably be scared." Because Kitty yeah. like gave zero fucks about anything in life. They go off their Except intuition. For me. They she feel loved me. The energy around themselves. They have like that sixth sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so they are getting stuff unboxed. They oh, are we get a beautiful around. shot here, like a beautiful long shot with the wind chime in. It's like basically oh, yeah. taking us through the house. Mm-hmm. And one of the girls, I forget which one it is. There's five of them, y'all. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get their names wrong. So can I, I've been practicing, I think. Yes. There's Andrea, Nancy, mm-hmm. Cindy. Christine and April. Yes. 
Yep. Yeah, I know April's name, and then I wrote down their names in here, mm -hmm. but like I don't remember which one was running through. I at believe this point it's Cindy because Cindy's the one with the Cindy's the one that was her wind chime. Yes, mm -hmm. she's the one who starts beating her head later on the, like the headboard or the wardrobe because she's sleepwalking. Oh, they have different. Oh, okay, wait, these are their actual names. Sorry, I was like, what the hell? Because look, I have this list of the actor with the actual. Oh, Mackenzie and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cindy Perrin. Yep, she was running through. But anyways, that was a nice long shot. It was one mm -hmm. actual shot. And it was bringing us through kind of each room of the bottom of the house. And it was really, really neat. I thought that it was good. Good, nice. Good cinema. Yep. Yeah. And then she yells out the back because April's found a little music box. She found a toy out there. Yeah, which I'm like, was it out there already? I'm sure it was because. But I then later we see I where think he placed it. we found it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but she finds it and we see her see something in like the reflection of it. But when she looks back, we don't see it. Mm -hmm. But obviously we see later what is actually there. That she's found Rory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's whenever they end up playing clap and seek hide and inside. Clap. Hide and clap. There yes. we go. Yeah. <laughs> hide and clap. And this is, like I said, the scene that made me be like, Fuck, I want to go see this film. Not this one exactly. It was, I believe, well, I don't know. I do remember the hands coming out from the closet. Mm -hmm. And which now we know in this first scene that that's not a paranormal not entity. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it was it was Nancy, I believe, in there. Nancy. Um, mm -hmm. And she clapped. But I believe that was what they showed in the trailer, if I'm not mistaken. And it was still fucking creepy. Yeah. Even like. I mean, once you watch it, you're like, oh, that's not a ghost there. But in the trailer, you had no clue. No, it was of terrifying. course you wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, and so that's whenever they're they're playing this game. They're all running around. Bumping um, into shit because they don't know the house. Yeah, of course. And there's um, boxes everywhere. Right after they were eating pizza. And yeah. um, that's whenever they end up finding a, uh, well, a secret basement, essentially, because... Uh, the two of the girls are playing. They get to that little closet area and one of them bumps into the wall. Yep, and Nancy. we see it leads to that secret cellar. Her elbow like goes through that mm -hmm. board and I'm like, damn, she must have got a strong elbow. Yeah. And um, so that's whenever the dad comes up and he's able to kind of take a look and he breaks through it and he goes down there and there's just a bunch of old shit down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It gives very like haunted possessions. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the clearly like, I mean, because then later on, uh, Carolyn's like, I wonder why it was boarded up. And I was like, it's clearly I know, boarded right? up for a, for reason. a reason. It has to be. And I mean, I know it was the seventies, but like, nah, not matches. Like why are you using matches as your light source? It burns up so quickly. I don't know. That was so, yeah. that makes it so scary. And that's what makes Carolyn's scene in the basement or cellar. So scary as well mm -hmm. is that the matches like, cause we're like seeing it and then it goes out. And then, you know, you're also like getting that burn on your fingers kind of as it's yeah. happening too. And you're like, ah. Because it burns so fast. Yeah. And it's just, oh, there's a lot of nice antiques down there. I'm sure there were. Something you some. can actually make money, which they're, which they're bringing up because they're like, especially the husband, he's like, we can sell some of this shit. Maybe there's something, you know, valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a cute curio cabinet down there. I was like, oh. And now, a word from our sponsors. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, and so they're just looking at everything that's down here. And um, what would you think of everything that was down there? I'd be essentially? like, hell yeah, jackpot. <laughs> right? Uh, take it to, what's that, uh, Rodeo, Antique Rodeo antique Show? Antique Show. Yeah, that one. Yeah, mm, and get it show. appraised. Maybe there's something worth like a bajillion dollars. No, I'd just fucking keep it. And I'd be like, I'm so lucky. It's true. You that's probably would. would and do. it would be like decor in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what a lot of mine actually has come from. Like. So, yeah. Um, or but from, like, what are those called whenever people die? Estate sales. Estate sales, yeah. Mm. I do have a lot of stuff from estate mm -hmm. sales. I love dead people shit. But continue. <laughs> I don't know where it was. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> They're heading back upstairs, though. Yeah. And uh, Ed drops some matches on the stairs. And that's kind of, I feel like, an important part because mm -hmm. then she'll be able to pick it up. 
later, later on in the film. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm wondering like here, I mean, I know she's not like possessed, possessed, but I feel like at this point, the dark entity is already latched onto Carolyn mm-hmm. because Sadie's like losing her mind barking at Carolyn. Yeah. And Sadie's like senses definitely that something is off. Yeah. I feel with like the that house, dark with her. spirit that mm-hmm. Lorraine talks about later on. I feel like it was basically like, like it zeroed in on her mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah. And was just like, okay, you're my person. And that's why I feel like Sadie was more hesitant towards her yeah. in general. I looked up into a lot of the actual case of what happened as well. And the daughters, actually, one of them uh, later on in an interview said that the like Bathsheba character, ghost like spirit, really like in hindsight was jealous and coveted like the spot of her mother mm. of like having them as her children and was lustful after her father. Oh yeah. That's creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole Bathsheba story in general, like Bathsheba doesn't, she was a person who existed. Mm-hmm. You can go find her tombstone her in line. Rhode Island. Yeah. However, to me, it personally sounds like someone who's just been wrongfully acclaimed mm-hmm. in, cause it was around kind of, I mean, it was shortly after the height of the witch trials Salem and witch everything. Trials, yeah. Um, but I feel like she's still very like wrongly accused. I don't know. She could have also been, oh, you witch. know, doing evil things, <clears throat> but it sounds like someone's name who's just been tarnished by like shithole kids lying and making up stories. And there mm-hmm. was a, there was like a story that she had killed an infant because she was watching over this child and this, it, I don't believe it was her child, but it was gotcha. one that was in her care and the child died. And then they said they found that there was uh, basically she stabbed like a sewing or a knitting needle mm-hmm. into the like s- back, this nape oh, of, wow. the of the baby baby's head mm. neck. And then that's, that's how intense. it died. Yeah. And so then there is from, according to Andrea. So the real life Andrea Perrin actually wrote a book. And I, I believe maybe even a three part book called like mm-hmm. house of darkness, house of light, I believe, or maybe it's reversed. Um, and there is a, this is like the whole reason they latched on to Bathsheba in general is because one point Carolyn was like sleeping on the couch and all of a sudden this very sharp stab came to her calf mm-hmm. and then there was a pool of blood underneath it and the wound itself was a very like concise very um like perfect circle basically that just looked like someone was like stabbed yeah with, say a knitting That's needle crazy. yeah or something and then so they simply started referring lorraine warren like heard this and simply just started referring to the entity as Bathsheba. gotcha it's not necessarily true that that it is was the all entity's linked together name. yeah well a lot yeah. of this too i mean the Warrens kind of for, for a lot of added their own fever to it. Like they, yeah. they frothed it up, you know, yeah. they added the foam and the substance, <laughs> you know, they didn't necessarily, they did. it's not like it's necessarily, it's like a half truth if that yeah. makes sense, you know, but some of this stuff did actually happen and put yes. them, you know, layering stuff onto it as well. And they have to make <clears> stuff <throat> obviously more theatrical appealable and mm-hmm. more yeah appealing for the actual screen. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's not necessarily as, uh, I don't know, exciting. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they for had sure. to do that. And they did have Lorraine actually on set. the set to a lot of the times, so not all the time, but then, and then also. Vera but of course, and, if, if like it's your life, you're going to make yourself seem like pretty good. good. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the actual sisters and stuff were on and the mom, they mm-hmm. all came to the set as well. And apparently one time Carolyn remarked that. She got the same like cold, evil feeling that she did when she was in that yeah. house. Well, um, yeah, and then apparently towards the end of like the of it all, um, when they were doing the filming and stuff, and they were going to set, the mom stayed home one time, and she like fell and hurt herself and like broke her hip. I th- I think she might have fallen at the set and had to be rushed to the hospital. That's and ha- what it was. Had to go home. Yeah, yeah. So she yeah. had an injury <clears> on the <throat> set, um, and then. Also, so going back to not a the bit daughters earlier, like breaking her hip for like yeah for <laughs> publicity publicity yeah oh. um but Vera and Patrick actually spent three days like kind of picking Lorraine's mind 
at mm-hmm. this point, Ed mm-hmm. had already passed, so it was mm-hmm. only Lorraine mm-hmm. um, that was able to consult on the film. But yeah, they spent three whole days like with her trying to really make sure that they were going to nail these characters as they did kind of become the main highlight of the film and the yeah. Conjuring series. As um, it was supposed to originally be focused on the parent family and like be told from the parents' perspective, but then the b- two brothers who came in decided to then make it about the Warrens instead, yeah. which did work out because for the franchise, yeah, for yeah. longevity, uh, it makes them be able to for the Conjuring too. It's mm-hmm. another case that the Warrens covered the Annabelle doll, also the Warrens yeah. and stuff like that. So. Although they could have maybe even covered a whole span of movies with just the parent family because apparently all of this covered a span of a decade yeah they lived in the house they, for almost 10 years because they couldn't afford to move anywhere else or lose the value of what they had paid to like live there mm-hmm. from the get-go so unfortunately they were like stuck there and at one point like the dad in the film he brings up a good point and he's like i don't know anyone who's willing to take in a family of seven mm-hmm. on yeah, a whim they just and can't. it's like yeah it's just seven not logistically is, like it's just too many people if it was like just you know you and your partner sure but like seven extra people, no one's house is that big. I love how you're like not even a kid's coming over. No, <laughs> just you and a kids. partner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, no <laughs> kids. Just like, not even you and a partner and a kid. But like no, just you and your partner. Mm-hmm. No, one kid out. You know, nope, sorry, can too many sleep. outside. I've got a dog house. I'm just kidding. Literally, I'm get, like, JK sued for child um, abuse. And so, um, we we come back to the movie. Miss Carolyn's woken up. She is uh, going downstairs. She notices that there's some, like, the uh, basement door is open, cellar door is open, but Roger's down there. He's going through a bunch of shit. And on her way down, um, she wakes up covered in bruises. Oh, she does. She yeah. makes She's a remark bruises. that the house mm-hmm. is freezing. The girls are like, it's so it's cold. M- oh, and it smells at one point during the night for Andrea. It smelled like uh, rotten, rant, meat. rotten meat. Yes. Yeah. She was like, can, can we actually get a <clears throat> toilet or like a house with a toilet that works? And mm-hmm. also my room smelled like rotten meat. And then she was like, well, does it still smell like it? And she was nope. like, no. And she was like, problem solved. Literally. And I was like, what a mom response. Um, and we also yeah. see the first clock stopped at 307, mm-hmm. that grandfather yeah. clock. Um, but so yes. all these little clues are happening throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have her getting down to the cellar and we've got light because Roger got a little light bulb, wor- light bulb working. And that's when they're looking at everything. And um, they're also just kind of going through everything. That's whenever this is a remark, whenever um, he is like, oh, we can get some money. Ro- yeah, we can get some money off of all this. And Roger's kind of going through everything. Um, and they it's. Not too big of a plot point, but then, yes, that's when we also look at those clocks stopping at 307. But then we're back in the kitchen, and that's whenever she does mention to him, like, what did you do to me? And he's like, I didn't do that to you at the bruises. He's like, did I? Yeah. And then we have April looking for um, She's going to go find Sadie. Sadie. And she goes outside to get her, and that's when we see that Sadie is dead. Yep. Um, Which always, when there's a dog in any horror movie, you will got to know it's going to die. Poor dogs. Poor dogs, Yeah. Um, or birds because the most innocent things die most yeah. of the time in the movies. And so, yeah, and the cats they, it's live. dead. Um, and so they're that's, helping the spirit. So like they're over there, get them. <coughs> yeah. Just kidding, I love cats. And so, um, but really that's, mm-hmm. <laughs> then we, we cut to, we have a different scene and that's whenever we have this dude going and looking with, um, Ed Warren through their spooky shit and their spooky shit room. <laughs> yeah. Their um, demon rooms, what I call it. It's yeah. There we go. Basically they're, it is an actual room and that they used to open up to the public. I mm-hmm. don't believe, I mean, especially with like Lorraine passing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That it was their like basically a haunted museum of sorts. And we're in Monroe, Connecticut at the Warren home. Yeah. Cause um, it's uh, obviously uh, too evil to keep out in the world, but if you got a $20 bill, come and look at it yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they definitely did it not on, not like as open as Zach mm-hmm. Bagan's haunted museum. For it was sure. more of like once a month they would kind of let people come in. A few select see. people. Yeah. I believe. I could also be talking down my ass right now, but if I remember correctly. Someone fact check us. Yeah. But no, don't or really. Not. Um, and so anyways, 
they are doing that. Yes, he's going through the room, and that's whenever we have their daughter, Judy. She's in there eavesdropping, and he's like, what are you doing in here, silly? After they looked at, like, you know, the whole Annabelle doll and all these other, you know, artifacts that they have, which all kind of play a role later on in other movies mm-hmm. and kind of can also lead to other movies that we haven't even had. Like, I would be so interested to see some of the objects that they have in that yeah, room. Yeah, like that big, like... Samurai thing. Samurai, or, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was cool. Um, um, yeah, there's <clears throat> a lot of things in there. And yeah. basically he's saying, because the guy was like, well, why don't you just, like, get rid of them mm-hmm. and or, like, burn them or something? He was like, sometimes it's better to keep the genie in the, in the bottle. bottle because otherwise these are all <laughs> conduits. And then they're going to just be out mm-hmm. and about. So it's yeah. better to keep them in here. Because he says, you don't destroy the evil that's in it. You just destroy the vessel. Mm-hmm. And so then it's able to, well, you don't even know where it would go after that. It's open yeah. to go wherever it wants. Floating around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it will find something to latch onto. It mm-hmm. will. And he says they bring a priest by every once a month to, to come and bless the room mm-hmm. and everything like that. Um, but yeah. So then it's 3.07 a.m. again, though. Yeah. And we're, t- it's time to yank some legs it We're is, with yeah. nancy and um uh, or nancy and uh christine christine mm-hmm. yes christine who is, played is by joey king the one who is getting yanked yes she is getting yanked um and she is um in the bed she starts smelling something funky and she's <laughs> telling uh, I think it's Nancy. Nancy yeah. um, stop farting. She's like, and stop farting. Yeah, and she's like, I'm not doing that. And so she's like, it's, it's just a quick little snippet of like kind of things that are happening between them at night. They're getting and that rotten egg smell, it, though, which is a exactly telltale sign. Of something demonic. Mm-hmm. And so at the same time, the dad wakes up and it starts hearing noises. Yeah, there's static on the TV, mm-hmm. thumping from the stairwell slash cellar area. There are doors opening and closing, mm-hmm. and then it leads him kind of around, kind of like a little goose chase, but then he ends up hearing something else at that upstairs, and he goes upstairs, and that's whenever Andrea is like, Cindy is sleepwalking again, and they go into the room, and she's hitting her head on the wardrobe. Yeah. Um, which armoire. is like, you know, another reference to the lying in the witch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I'm just thinking like, she's man, just she's really just bumping her head. But And that's even when Andrea is just like, I've never seen her do that before. Yeah, I mean, she's <clears throat> not like, not super hard, but with the amount of repetition that it's happened since we've heard like all those thumps, mm-hmm. it's, and she's hitting just the same spot. So yeah. eventually, you know, a drip of water can erode rock and stuff so like <laughs> she should be bleeding little blistering little skin but yeah he ends up stopping her and he doesn't necessarily wake her but he leads her back to her bed mm-hmm. um and that kind of all happens and then that's whenever i think it's the next day already and the mom has more bruises yep um, yeah she's covered in quite a few mm-hmm. like more yeah and something is definitely like we get our leaving first or visiting her in the middle of the night we get the bird hitting the window when the Poor dad Pagan. is leaving for work um and it just kind of is a very bad omen already you know and we get right the older here. girls going to school yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. that's right mm-hmm. right here i made a note of a very good use of the soundtrack i personally really enjoyed the soundtrack mm, in this yeah, film nice. there are a few times where it leads <clears throat> you but then i liked how we would go from kind of like chaotic scenes to then just like silence within like loud average noises as yeah. in like doors opening or something and it's just everything else is quiet but then will flash back to you know orchestral s- stuff happening and it's very like loud and then it's just boom, boom, yeah boom. i will say too i would listen to it with headphones for some of it and it really they really played in like having like also if you're not um listening to it with headphones i feel like you don't hear it. there's a lot of like little eerie like moans or like mm. little breathing sounds in the background that you don't necessarily hear when you're like just playing just it on the tv it. yeah interesting mm-hmm. yeah Mm-hmm. Um, and so <clears throat> that's whenever uh, April is playing with uh, her little ghost friend, Rory. Yeah, she's in having her a bedroom, full ass little, conversation mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with Rory. And, and her, her mom comes like, in and is like, who are you f- talking to? Yeah, she's like, uh, and she's like, my friend, Rory. Mm-hmm. And she like tells her you can see him when you like turn the little music box, whatever. It's like a jack. Uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, it's what kind are of like a jack in the box. There you go. But it's also not because the whole mm-hmm. time it's like just bobbing. bobbing in and out like a little whack-a-mole. And yeah. then you've got that fun circular it's a spiral rotating in the back. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. I Which mean, is a, a cool nod to you because it's directed by James Wan and he directed Saul and it's a spiral. That's right. Yeah. He did direct 
song. I almost said swan. Swan Lake. I was thinking (laughs) Black Swan. And song. Yeah. So swan is what Um, my brain said. (laughs) And so that's whenever April wants to play hide and clap because she says the older girls never want to play with me. And so her mom's. Exactly. So they start playing. Oh, whenever April popped up behind her, though, it kind of scared me a bit. There's a. April does that a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. She's a little spooky kid. And so she ends up wanting to play with her. They do play. They start doing this little game. And immediately. Carolyn. I'm like, those clocks are too big to be yeah, April. Right? They're he- very heavy. Yeah. I was like, Ooh. and so <laughs> Carolyn is getting led around. She ends up going into, I believe it's Andrea's room mm-hmm. where the wardrobe is. And she hears a little like clap thud going on in there. And then the door opens. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, so you must be in here. And she's like, I hear you breathing. And yeah. it's so creepy because you usually can hear it. And then that's whenever she's about to get in there and you see the little hands come out Mm -hmm. clapping. And then April comes running up from behind her being like, what are you doing, silly? I was in Nancy's room. Yeah. And then she like looks in there and she's freaking out. She's like, I clearly heard something like breathing in here. And I think her going back just a bit, her voice as she's looking like her little sing song voice and everything like I'm going to get you Mm -hmm. and stuff also made the scene like so creepy, extra creepy. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm. then, yeah, like you said, the, I can hear you breathing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's very creepy. Don't touch it. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. But then then after that, that's whenever we get the um, kind of scene setting up that dad has to leave. Roger has to go because he has to make money and And he's a truck driver and there's a like week turnaround going to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So he's basically leaving them for a whole week and that's like, I mean as we can tell, obviously stuff is already kind of escalated and so that's definitely not a good, Mm -hmm. definitely not a good thing. And then we flash back to Christine and she's homegirl sleeping with her feet out yet again. Another time. And I'm like girl, no. Yeah. And then it pulls her once and then it yanks, yanks her. her really hard. <laughs> yeah. Enough to like freak her the fuck out because she's like, oh my God, there's obviously no one there. Yeah. So she was like woken up looking immediately, like around the bed, underneath the bed, around the room. And then finally, I don't understand she's, how she I, looked over oh, the edge yeah, of that bed. Yeah. Wait. So many times, twice. Yeah. I yeah. was like, girl, you are braver than me. I would have been I throwing my have. pillows over there. <laughs> and Nancy be like, get out, get out. Yeah. And I would have been like, is there someone in my bed? Like it would have been like me out. being on the ledge of the bed, a hop to the middle of the room and then a hop to the light, turn on the light. Like, I don't know what, but yeah, yeah, I would not have been like oh, just God. poking my head underneath. And that shot was so good oh, yeah. because you're it's almost like a first person POV and mm-hmm. you're like following her over the edge of the bed and it's down. terrifying. And then you see like she hears something go by the where the door is and the door is creaking open and then she's seeing something and that she looks up and it follows her and she sees something behind the door and then her sister wakes up, but Nancy doesn't see it. And then she's she like, goes Do you see it? by the door and There's she's like, oh, my God, it's door. right behind you. Yeah. And I don't understand how Nancy got up either. Like if I woke up, saw my sister in such right. hysterics, yeah. I clearly freaked out. <clears throat> yeah. Like more. Well, so she was. Than, I mean, even so, she was like, what's wrong? Like, I feel like she was still what's wrong. But if she if well, you don't see I don't happening. understand how she just got up. Mm-hmm. And walk towards the door. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I feel like I would have trusted my sister. And I, my immediate thought would be to hop beds to be with her mm. and just hold each other and then mm-hmm. cry and mm-hmm. scream and die. <laughs> <laughs> scream until someone can come and get you. But yeah. yeah, so Nancy gets up, goes to the door. We get that bad smell again. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, she's like, oh my God, oh and my then God the, I'm standing right behind you. And then the door slams. Pew! Yeah. And then, of course, they're screaming mm-hmm. as and you know christina is inconsolable as like roger's trying to be like what's even happening um and all that's happening and she then, says it talked to me and it says it wants my family mm-hmm. dead which is pretty eerie pretty scary to hear yeah. your kid say that as well because it doesn't because at first you're probably as a parent should be like it was just a bad dream like come like you know you probably just saw whatever it was a bad dream but then you're like your kid's like we're all gonna die like yeah. you know like that's yeah and yeah, especially like christine heavy. seems to have a pretty level head yeah she doesn't seem like too fanciful or anything mm-hmm. and so i feel like for her to say that it must have had a little bit of weight to yeah. it where they were like oh shit okay mm-hmm. um we trust her and but 
we go back to the Warrens mm-hmm. and they're um getting called to this little play uh house to check out a haunt. They end up debunking it because there's a lot of like leaky pipes and like water and like wind, like all this stuff that's like accounting for what a lot of haunts I'm essentially thinking end up becoming because there's a lot of explanations for things and yeah, it's very it like rare the, where you actually get like a real haunt. It was like the expansion of the furnace and mm-hmm. stuff and the water moving through the pikes and whenever it and of with also the combination of the window being open, it was creaking the floorboards and basically making the house breathe. Um, yeah. And right before that, as they're going to go, he was basically going to go investigate without her. And this is one of the first times where I feel like we really kind of get an insight into how he doesn't really want Lorraine there because he's trying to protect her. Yeah, he doesn't want to risk her getting hurt. And then she because says... Because there was a uh, time before, which we kind of get a lot of flashbacks throughout the whole movie, yeah. where she was affected heavily by something that happened while they were doing a exorcism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she says to him, like, do you remember what you said, or what I said, or what you said to me on our mm-hmm. wedding night? And he said, can we do it again? <laughs> and then she's like, after that. And uh, basically, like, saying that, like, you know, God brought us together for a reason, which also comes back yeah, later in. Another time. Um, <clears throat> and But basically, she's like, nah, we going. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to help you. You can't stop me. And so they end up, we cut back to the parents, and that's whenever Mama has more bruises. Miss she Carolyn is bruised the fuck up. Uh-huh. And, I mean, at this point, it's giving way worse than, like, anemia. Like, she does yeah, no. not have no deficiency. There's something going on. Because these were massive bruises, mm-hmm. like, the size of, like, mangoes yeah. and shit. Like, Ooh, just huge. I want a mango now. Um, and so they end up, she's, she's there at the house and she hears a giggle. Um, and at this point she's saying like, man, like you kids should be asleep. Like this okay. y'all, what are y'all doing? So she's like folding laundry and stuff, but then she's like, let me investigate. And I like how it faked us out with that mirror shot on mm-hmm. her little armoire. Oh yeah, and for sure. Too. Cause you think something's about to happen because it always does. And so then it was like, nice. Yeah. I like a little fake out. That. And then she's going investigating, but all the kids are asleep. So then when she's looking and I think it's over, she's looking over Cindy. Um, um, that's whenever she hears all the fucking pictures fall off the wall. And this yeah. thud is so loud and like eerie. And you hear like a little laughter going on in the background. You can hear, yeah, like footsteps running down the stairs. Yeah. And so she runs out, obviously, to go check out what's happening. All the pictures that they have hung up are, like, literally on the ground, on the, like, shattered, shattered on I the don't understand stairway, how on the floor. none of the girls woke up. And also, yeah, I don't either. I that. thought one of them would have, especially Andrea, because her room was, like, right there. But mm-hmm. also, Miss Carolyn just starts walking down the thing all on the, all on the stairway. And was she wearing slippers? Did she you, was. She was? Okay. I was, like, I don't remember But she did, that. like, step, like, right on a piece of glass. I'm, I'm like, like, what are you stepping on all that glass? <laughs> Um, and so she's walking down there and then that's whenever we do see that the basement door opens as she's like, well, before that, the clock strikes, we're getting all these yeah, eerie things. Hear she hears another clap. She's getting led throughout the house and she's just kind of like getting spooked here and there because all these things are happening. And obviously there's not like a, she doesn't see anybody, you know? Yeah. So it's very spooky. And as the cellar door opens, we hear that same, like the three, according to my closed captioning, sour notes. Oh, yeah, because that she, she had played upon the discovery of the exactly cellar. Exactly, earlier. So yeah. it's a good little callback as well. Which and I feel like has to happen. When you find an out tune piano in a horror film, mm-hmm. you are going to play some little memorable ditty, and then it will be played back to you at a later date, like in exactly. Hell House. Yeah. And so they, she, and she's like, so she ends up going down she goes to like the beginning of the entrance of the cellar goes down the steps but she kind of looks and she's like you know what nah whoever is down here i'm gonna lock you in in. now but when she tries to go up unfortunately the door slams and knocks her down the stairs and she gets it's quite a tumble yeah she tumbles all the way down and she's down there like literally and so she's looking around and she's (laughs) really spooked out and that's whenever she's this ball just gets tossed across the room and does this little dribble on the floor the and it's really spooky. Then yeah. It was pretty funny. It was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, I was like the soundtrack to that was kind of, but comical, perfect. But then yeah. I was also like, but also hell nah. Because it's also like, it's comical. I think also in a sense, because the spirits are really fucking with her at this mm-hmm. moment because it's Rory like, just wants to play. Mm-hmm. He's like, no bitch, it's time to play, play mm-hmm. with the ball. We're going to play hide and clap. And then the light goes out. Yeah, And so she goes up the stairs, she finds those matches that were left there earlier by mm-hmm. Roger, and she's able to light one, and that's whenever she's, like, 
freaking out a little bit, but then you hear little Rory saying, do you want to play hide hey, and clap? you want to play hide and clap? And then he sticks his little hand and claps, and then the light goes out, and she freaks out. Yeah. That, and and then we just the get scene. like, and then we just get an image of the like basement door just like, like yeah. not being able to be open. And that's the scene that I said like still gives me shudders because mm-hmm. it it's so creepy. I mean, it's her. She's backed up to the wall, and it's not humanly possible yeah. for anyone to be there. So it's like, nope. And at the same time, we have Cindy sleepwalking again, and mm-hmm. she ends up in Andrea's room and at that wardrobe, and she's doing the same thing. And whenever Andrea like brings her back, and it's like, okay, you can sleep in my bed, and puts her down. The wardrobe starts making the same noise again, and then it kind of does this and little it's in opening the thing. Three and the as three, well. yes. And, and then, I love the uh, shot as like uh, Andrea's Andrea's walking up to it, and we're getting it from below. It makes the whole it takes up the whole screen. Yeah, it makes the armoire look so daunting. It's like just as she's big, walking like, up. Like, yeah, <laughs> takes mm-hmm. up the whole screen. I was like, ah! and then she goes to it, and then that's whenever she opens it, and then. Nancy comes to you, or Cindy, sorry, mm-hmm. Cindy comes to you and she looks up and she like eyes wide open is like, oh my God. And that's whenever it looks up and there's this bitch on top of the armoire, which is yeah. Bathsheba. And she jumps on top of Andrea and she starts attacking her. And this is my least favorite part of the movie. Oh, why? Because you actually see like the, the her. I don't like the pan in on the face. Mm. I remember the first time I saw it. I'm like, meh. I, I liked mad. it. My favorite, my I liked favorite it. part of the yeah. scene, but like of the film, is whenever she's when Lorraine has fallen through the wall, and you get the, um, the hanging feet mm-hmm. that are struggling, and then they stop, and then they turn. Yeah, that to me is like a thousand times more terrifying than that pan in on her face. Yeah, I'm like just seeing you on that, that is like yeah. so the much theory. creepier. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I did. I also found that very comical. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that part is not at all comical to me. That one's just like, nope, that's fucking fucking scary. And <laughs> the way that the mom, like the other lady pops up, I like her face because it's believable. Oh, yeah. It's not like distorted or anything. Mm-hmm. But Whatever I mean, she's like, she made me do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just clear that she's been crying a lot. It's mm-hmm. still terrifying with how close it is to her face. It's like, what? Yeah. But I don't know. The pan in on hers, I was just like, eh. It could have been better. And so. I mean, I still like it. It's just if I had to choose a least favorite scene, it's that. Mm-hmm. It's that one. Yeah. And so she's getting attacked. And that's whenever the dad gets back from work and he runs in because he hears everybody screaming. And he's like, essentially, as soon as he gets in, because it's all kind of invisible, he just doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, Andrea is just like fighting someone on the ground. You just yeah. see her like squirming. Exactly. But nothing's there. And he's like, somebody can tell me what the fuck is going on. Because he yeah. literally just rolled up. He was like. Beep beep, and then yeah. he heard ah! everybody screaming. With so he bolts, yeah. and I mean, I also would be like, "What the yeah. fuck is happening?" If Same. I came into my whole house erupted in screams. Oh yeah, like, especially when you being see her being week. on the floor and she's like fighting nothing. Yeah, because you know? then you're like, "Oh my god, is she?" Like, <laughs> and then the mom was like locked downstairs. Yeah. yeah. So and then all so the terrifying. like picture frames are on the floor, and so shattered, and so. We cut to, we have the students um, going over footage with Ed and Lorraine over an exorcism that they were performing over um, Maurice, who is this priest, who is just, which is kind of an introduction to a storyline that we get later through The Nun, which is another spinoff from this series. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's when they would go over the three stages of a possession, which is infestation, oppression, and then finally possession. Yeah, and the infestations um, when you're hearing like the whispering, the footsteps, mm-hmm. and you can sense another presence there. And then the oppression is when it does target the most psychologically vulnerable and kind of latch on. And then the possession is, of course, whenever it takes over the actual body. In yeah. this scene, Lorraine Warren is in the front row. Yeah. She makes a cameo. <clears throat> like oh, actual yeah. Lorraine Warren. No, yeah, Warren. she's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, she's in there. And this is when uh, we see that Carolyn has gone there because she's like, yes. no, something is fucking wrong. Mama is in the audience. And she thankfully does approach drew and mm-hmm. drew is like cute drew yeah yeah drew mm-hmm. but then he's like okay no this seems legit i'm gonna actually introduce you to the warrens mm-hmm. and they agree to come check out the house at first they were like they do yeah no, no but we're, we're it's, tired. it's carolyn's like plead of like you know this from one mom to another mom and father like please help us she like, looks i'm terrified so for my family 
Yeah. And so they do uh, they do agree. They arrive to the house and then that's whenever they come up, they are meeting the family. I love the pan and also too when they are pulling up to the house where it's like it's very ominous and they're mm-hmm. like coming in. But they do meet um Roger and as soon as they walk in, you Lorraine is Lorraine already is just something. like, nah, I get very bad vibes from this. this Even just immediate. her body language. Yeah, it, like she's not saying anything yet. She doesn't say anything. Vera Farmiga is like her her acting is very like at this point, mm-hmm. like you can tell that she is not comfortable anymore. Yeah. Cause, because and she's looking at each of them kind of weird. Like she mm-hmm. almost flinches. When they're meeting the family. Yeah. yeah. Which we do find out later why. But at this point, it's just like giving us even more to like she she's she can tell something mm-hmm. is off. And they're talking to them and they're telling them about like the rancid smells that they're smelling. They've tied about. the door shut because they bang at night. Exactly. And, and how Ed's, all the knocks come in three. Yeah. And, and Ed, Ed's the one who brings it up. Mm-hmm. He's like, do they come in threes? Or because he goes just like this, dun dun dun. Yeah. And then Ed's like, they come in threes, and he was like, uh, yeah, actually all of them. And he goes, and they stop at dawn. And he was like, yep. And this is where we understand that the three is a mocking of the Holy Trinity, mm-hmm. and that's why, uh, that's why three o'clock is the witching hour, mm-hmm. essentially, as well, because it is again, it's directly mocking the Father, the Son, and the Holy yeah. Spirit. And then we also have um, the rain picking up a lot of like vibes throughout the entire like er, every time you get a pan in on her, she's really just like being like, oh, shit, something's off. Yeah, Yeah. she's not comfy. Yeah. And so then they'd start a recording and they're kind of going over like, you know, this is Ed and Lorraine. Like we were here with the parents. We're going over all of this. It was November Um, 1st. mm -hmm, They give the date. Halloween happened. And that's whenever we have um, the rain talking to April about um, Rory always being sad. And um, Lorraine asks if she can see Rory. So she asks her to play with the toy. And so she does a little thing where she spins it and she looks in it. And it's a little moment to set you up for a good little scare because she does end up seeing Rory. And Um, I love, so at this mm -hmm. point, so every time I feel like we get and we're looking at that spiral, it takes a hot second for the camera to focus and for you to actually be able to see see the reflection. And then this one, after she does get that stop and she's like finally fixated on one area, it happens twice. It rotates twice and you don't get it until the third reflection or like the third rotation of the mm-hmm. spiral. And I feel like that builds a lot of good anticipation. And then he's gone. Ties it's into just the a three. flash. Yeah. And yeah. And then that's whenever she also goes outside to look around the property and she goes to the lake and then Ed comes up to get her. And that's whenever she sees a woman hanged yep, uh, see right Beth above Sheba's him. Little feces. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, they're yeah. basically just like, y'all need an exorcism. Yeah. Because this is a lot of bad juju. And if you, you even try to leave and go anywhere, there's no point because it's following you and it's, it's latched onto latched, you. Yeah. And, and that's when never on you and leaving exactly won't mm-hmm. do anything. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when we get the call. Like we flash back to when she was meeting them and we see this entity latched onto their family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we also, this is where we get the mention of Roger saying like, we bought the house at auction. We basically like sunk all of our savings. Into yeah. This. We, like, can't we can't leave. leave. Yeah. And we get, that, we can't sell the comment of the, who's going to take in a family of seven on a whim. Like mm-hmm. it's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then as they're leaving the house, basically Ed is explaining like how the church has to actually authorize an exorcism first. Like it's not just something they have. They to can really nilly proof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Vatican's not handing out exorcisms and yeah. basically they have to gather the evidence. And then he was like, are you at church going? Cause he was like, are any of the kids baptized? And he was like, no, yeah. we never got, never to got that. around to yeah. that. Like we're not really a church going family. And he was like, you might want to consider being one because yeah. us being here is going to piss him off. Disturb the spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Just he also threat. tells them we're going to do our homework and we're going to figure out like, we know the history of this place. So best to combat it. Um, and so, yeah, they are back home. They are listening to the playback as they are also going over the notes of what Lorraine has came to like know and her studying up on the house. And mm-hmm. right before that, her daughter gives Judy, Judy mm-hmm. yes, the locket, her mom the locket, which mm-hmm. is important. And that's whenever they're going through it, but the like the recording has nothing on it because apparently something had like 
you stopped the recording or like deleted what was on it. Yeah. And you just couldn't hear Carolyn's voice at all. Yeah. Because I believe the entity was blocking it. You could hear everyone else. <clears throat> but hers. Yeah. But hers. And, and we learned that Bathsheba was a witch. She had like just come through. Her sister was like part of the witch Salem witch trials. Yeah. She was in 1863 was when the house was built by Judson Sherman and who was married to Bathsheba and mm -hmm. Marytown Esty was a relative and was hung and tried in the witch trials. Um, and then it said that she was caught sacrificing her baby at seven days old. So she ran out to the tree, proclaimed, proclaimed her love to say and cursed anyone who tried to take her land and hung herself, which is like so dramatic. Yeah. Very dramatic. And yeah. it's like, no. <laughs> but, you know. And the time of death was 3.07 a.m. And that's why the clock stopped at 3.07. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And that's <laughs> after all of this gets, you know, explained and stuff. That's whenever we have them going back to the house. And that's whenever we meet our officer. Not before, though. Oh, what happened right before? So we also do get Tell me. the in the 30s. We got the name of Walker killing herself in the cellar oh, that's after right. her son mysteriously went missing. But mm -hmm. then the recorder starts playing mm -hmm. at 307. Oh, that's right. In their house. And then instead of like Carolyn speaking, it's like whales. the demon voice. Like, yes. Just like. <laughs> mm -hmm. in the background the whole time but yes now drew and brad drew and brad they get to number meet. one couple of the year and that's whenever drew gets to give his little quibble of being like well you can't shoot ghost with the gun because <laughs> the officer's like i'm here and i'm ready to protect y'all yeah and it's like well, this yeah. is an unseen force buddy well, yep. sometimes but seen. do your best. Yeah. Um, and so they're setting up around the house with some cameras. It's giving very um, uh, grave encounters. They're setting <laughs> up all these cameras around yeah. and they want to, you know, make sure they record everything. And because they're trying to get proof so that way they can get the Vatican to approve of the exorcism. And they've and got so, a lot of cool, like old, obviously it's older equipment, but mm -hmm. like they've got the temperature basically censored cameras that are triggered to go off mm -hmm. when a sudden cold drops. drop happens. Yeah. They um, flash. Motion sensed ones and stuff like that. Um, and it's really cool. Then we have Lorraine and Miss Carolyn talking about this family trip that she always will like have dear, near and dear to her heart because they come across the pictures and the photographs. And that's whenever she also tells her, like, you know, we were putting these up, but they kept falling down. So we just stopped. And um, this will come back later on. And it's very important because this is a memory that really um, helps Carolyn, like, keep her family as her, like, rock mm -hmm. in holding her onto this realm whenever she starts getting fucked with Bathsheba. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's just setting a lot up for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, and we see that Lorraine gets it as an insight mm -hmm. just from touching. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's touching Carolyn. up her power in the movie yeah. as well. Because she's an X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although it clearly looks like to me that they're at the beach in that yeah. picture. But also, it, I mean, it could have just been a nice grassy it's field. Like, well, you know, the you go to them. see like a, like, a clairvoyant she, and she's like, oh, do you have a last name? Ooh, were you born? Ooh. Yeah. Did you eat yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Because she was like, oh, what a nice, like, what a lovely day at the beach. And mm -hmm. she was like, how do you know? And I was like, oh, the fucking picture. Yeah, literally. You're <laughs> but, on the beach. But yeah. Whatever. I mean, so, when you look at the picture, you can't yeah. actually see a beach at all. You, It's like almost shot from underneath the family. And yeah. so you just get the bright blue sky. But you can tell. But yeah, to me, I don't know. Totally Even the, well, and the attire that yeah. they're wearing. Yeah. Even though they didn't plan to go to the beach. They yeah. were just driving through, saw the scenery. And one of them had pointed out like, oh, it looks so nice. And then mm -hmm. they were like, let's stop. Yeah. And stuff. And so they did. But yeah. And then... Ugh, I know, then scoff. We, we have this fucking slut. Yeah. Andrea flirting Andrea with getting Drew. getting in the way of my boy love. And she's flirting with Drew. I'm going to go write like a fan kind fiction, of like, you know, <laughs> do it. They're <laughs> vibing. I will Come say they're vibing. Um, but then, you know, Ed comes in. And he's like, you know, did you get the cameras up? Whatever, whatever. Yeah, and he's and like, yeah. And they said, far out. Far out, Movie. yeah. Well, they're in like, the 70s. I know, but I yeah. felt so they're placed. Hippies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they're setting up crosses as well, because apparently when you set up the crosses, it's kind of like, you know, um, supposed to protect, but also it kind riles of riles them up. It riles them up. Exactly. You the know, religious icons, presence of religious icons are there to just basically piss them off. So at this point they start getting, um, bells jingling. They get a camera flashing. Oh, and Brad had come out of the bathroom. The bathroom. He oh, opened yeah. the door, but like hadn't flushed yet or anything. So everyone was like, <gasps> yeah. And then it was like, oh. 
Excuse it was just me. Brad. <laughs> um, but yeah, all that's happening. They, night 18, they start going into the cellar because the door opened on its own. And so um, whenever they start getting to that, there's kind of no reaction in the basement when they're down there because they're like, you know, if you're down here, speak, say something, mm-hmm. you know, let us know that you're here. And Lorena's is like, nah, it's dead. It's gone. Yeah, because at Literally. first she was kind of struck. Yeah. Like she had her. She was like, there's something here on one of the on one of the pillars. And yeah. she looked like she was like buckled over, like struggling mm-hmm. to breathe and was like, oh, God, my hands are they're freezing. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden she's like, nope, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Literally. And they walk upstairs and then the moment they're out, door slams. Yeah. They were just like. Nah, get out of here. We don't want to play right now. Mm-hmm. Rory's like, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. And and then, the, and then that's whenever even like, you know, Brad was a little skeptical and they all see it. And so they're draft. like, oh, wow. Yeah, it must have been a draft. And so it's already the next day. We oh, have. And then this is. Sorry. Uh-huh. Drew does say Drew. Drew moment. Um, he, he says a draft never put that look on my face before. And I was mm-hmm. like, you sassy motherfucker. I love you. And then I put power couple. Whoa. Ship them. And them. so we have then. Uh, it's the next day. We have Lorraine and Ed outside. They're talking about like uh, Ed's basically being like, I, yeah, you know, I want to have another baby. Um, essentially, I could get used to this, like having a family the of our own. Air. I was like, the open in this air. House, this is giving on this. you like, yeah, you I know, right? Movement? Haunting, but yeah. And so they're doing a weather, or whatever. She's like, uh, I want to help this family. And he's like, I'll start by working on the motor of this Chevy or whatever. So he's going to work on some car. Oh yeah, because all of the. So all of the children have left. The dad, Roger, took them out to go get ice cream. Mm -hmm. And then Lorraine was like, why don't you just like stay? Or Carolyn had suggested, I think I might just take a nap. And then they were like, that's actually a good idea. Mm -hmm. You should get some rest. And so that's why Lorraine was outside doing the laundry. For her, yeah. And because she was helping out around the house because Carolyn's clearly like getting exhausted. She's getting drained daily. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's whenever she's out there and the weather starts changing. And one of the best scenes also. Mm-hmm. I love this scene. Yeah, because she's trying to pull, like, these the sheets off super fast, fucking fast. Because it's about to rain. So she's trying to get them in the thing. And she pulls the sheets off. And that's whenever they go off the clothespin and they fly with the wind. And they go onto, like, a body, essentially. Yeah. You get the outline in the silhouette. Rather close to mm-hmm. her. This body, like, it gets Very caught freaky. on it. And yeah. it was like, that's, like, literally maybe three feet away from her. She goes... And then it goes right up to the window. Yep. It gets kind of stuck there. And then it like gets like up around the corner. Yeah. And then you see in its place now is someone, someone in a white in nightgown mm-hmm. with her hair down, who we now know is Bathsheba based yeah. on her appearance. And then she just turns and like walks towards the bed because we know that that's Carolyn's room. Yeah. Because Carolyn has looked out of that window before and looked down. We kind of got her looking outside of it. The first time, that's when Sadie was losing her mind at the window and was like, bark, 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 bark. Yeah, going that's off. That's exactly how Sadie barked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Look. yeah, it, it's, it's so crazy because it's just like at that point, too, she's like freaking out. because She's like, what the fuck? And so she's going up and that's whenever she tries to get to Carolyn. But then Carolyn ends up coming from the restroom and she's like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Oh, and we saw Bathsheba puke blood oh, in her mouth. That's right. Yeah. She did puke blood. Like, so it's just like, oh my God, she just vomited all in her mouth. So now obviously at this point she possessed. is possessed. Yes. Because mm-hmm. um, she comes out, she's clearly not herself. She blows mm-hmm. the rain off. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, she's I hear like, uh, Roger and the kids. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, bitch, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah. You're clearly not okay either. But okay. If I was Lorena, I'd be like, nah, sit the fuck down, you trick ass bitch. Yeah. But probably didn't say that in the 70s. No, you, you don't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> And so at this point, then we have, um, who is it? Roger talking to Ed? Yeah, because yeah. he comes home. He sees that Ed's working on the Chevy. Mm-hmm, exactly. And so they're having a nice little Bro chat. man to man, mm-hmm. heart to heart. And they're going over, like, why Ed essentially wanted to help them. And he's like, oh, I honestly didn't even want to help you. It's all only because Lorraine wanted to help you. Yeah, because yeah. he says every time that we come out here and do stuff like this, like, every person Lorraine helps and touches and stuff, it helps them. But each time it takes a little piece of her. Mm-hmm. And he said, and a couple months ago, it took a real big piece. Yep. It really did. Yeah. And that was what they're talking about. The uh, exorcism that they were doing with that priest. Yeah. Which we get a callback later to with another film called The Nun. Yeah. Um, spoiler alert. But yeah. And he said that after that one, she went into like basically she didn't say anything the whole ride home. Mm-hmm. Went into her room. 
like didn't or talk the for office. eight days. Yeah. yeah, locked herself in there, didn't eat, didn't talk, didn't do anything for eight days. And then mm-hmm. she came out and never spoke about it. And he's like, and I'm never gonna ask her. Yeah. He's like, I don't want her to relive that, basically. Yeah. Cause she saw something whenever the demon latched or the guy held on to her, gripped her. Cause yeah, we see that later when she's like, Mama. But yeah. anyways, Brad goes down to get some coffee. He does. And this is whenever he's kind of freaking out because at this point he sees outside, he hears the wind whistling. He's and he sees hears that an actual a, whisper. Uh, it's a whisper. See, look what you made me look do. What you made me do. Look what you made me do. Boom. Come on, Taylor Swift. And that was all I could the, think of this the, whole time. <laughs> the, the, the chair was rocking outside. He goes outside, but he doesn't really necessarily see anything. So when he comes inside, he turns to his right and there's a girl and a she girl. looks like a maid. She a looks maid. like a maiden. And <laughs> she, she was, she is a maid. Had her slits wrist. <laughs> she had a wrist slit. So wrist slits wrist. She had her slit wrist slit wrist. There you go. She wristed her slits. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, she was Sounds literally. Dirty. <laughs> it does she had her wrist slit and she was saying look what she made me do he goes up to her it, but she, she like blonde. just disappears it was taylor yeah. swift it was she, a cameo it was she disappears but then <laughs> it wasn't really you guys this is what inspired it though because this came out before like what she made me do and she so she watched it and was like this is me can the old taylor swift come to the phone right now oh no why i'm sorry because she's, she's dead. dead but anyways we're not swifties um but i'm then, really not no, I'm really not either. But for some I just reason, know every I know one of literally her songs. every single. That's what I was about to say. Um, and so you can't we her. have her then um, getting. Or sorry, he goes up to the body, but he like then it kind of slips away from him, and he's freaking out. He's like, what the and hell? then she just comes out of nowhere and runs up on him. She's charging him. Look yeah. what she made me Look do. Look what she made me do. And he freaks the fuck out. He's calling out Roger's name. He's and Ed's name, and he's freaking out. It's Ed's name. So bad. He's calling it out, and that's whenever he comes in. And she's like, "There was something here. There was somebody here." Um, and then they're like freaking everybody out and, and then that's whenever happening, something's happening with cindy yeah cindy yeah. is being led well she's being led upstairs by an entity yeah at this point it looks like she's sleepwalking but it does yes mm-hmm. it does look like she's sleepwalking but then ed's like no those cameras are triggered by mm-hmm. because we watched all of them Something run past else. it yeah and so the those were some of the cameras triggered by the drop in temperature yeah and he says something's with her she's yep. not alone something's leading her that way and then basically she gets up to the room the door is locked so they're like get on the headphones drew's like little mm-hmm. detective <laughs> he goes throws on the headphones and he's like guys there's somebody in there with her and stuff yeah. and then that's when they were finally able to get in they um, are, yeah. And so they get in, and that's whenever they um see that nobody's in there because they're like, where the fuck is Cindy? And so they're looking for her. But oh. right before that, that was because something told Cindy, come and follow me into my hiding spot. Yeah, and that was how Drew knew that someone was in there because he was mm-hmm. hearing Rory telling her, like, it's safe over here. This is where I hide when I'm scared. Yeah. Kind of thing. And so they're using the UV lights because they're like, get the UV lights. And so they use UV lights and they see the handprints uh, or footprints go all the way up to the wardrobe and then handprints at the back of the wardrobe. And they get into, like, the secret, like, com- apartment area where they slide back and there's a hole in the wall and Cindy or right. Cindy's back there and she's just like she's half just asleep. A yeah. Nap. Let's take a little nap and they pull her out of there. Um, and Sorry. my notes here just uh-huh. say literally love Drew so much. 10 out of five booze for Drew. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he didn't do anything except exist. shout out to Drew. I think it was whenever he was like, go get the UV light. Yeah. And then Drew was like, go, go hurry. Here After it he yeah. hands it to Brad. Mm-hmm. And so then I was Cause like, Brad ah. didn't know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's Sorry, whenever like, they find what? that whole hairy, huh? And then after that, we have Lorraine. Kind of a creepy little cross face. Yeah, it is. Know? We have Lorraine checking it out. But she also goes I in there. Lived for that shit as a kid. Me too. I love whenever there's like um, houses that have those little like closets and then like there's like a little secret room in there mm-hmm. like kind of thing. There was yeah. so many like so my mom, you know, she was an artist mm-hmm. and she did a lot of nicer like houses before their open houses mm-hmm. like as they were being built. And um, all the time we get to go to the open houses and my mom would be like try and find how many secret rooms are in here so then we'd just go through and that was what would occupy us the whole time is like pressing on every bookshelf yeah, <laughs> trying to get through so cool. and a lot of them did they had like mm-hmm. there was one i think there was like three or four secret rooms where the bookshelves would either push in or like open out it was so cool so what's real funny too is i had like in high school i had a friend um she and i somehow and i feel like it was more led by her 
we one time or a few two three times we started going to like the richer neighborhoods like by the lake waco and there were some houses still being like in construction and we would not go and like sneak in because they wouldn't have any type of like security mm. and we would just go into them and they're like be half constructed but we would like go through them and like go climb onto the roof and like <laughs> yeah we would i would literally walk across beams that like had nothing like below them and like yeah yeah because i didn't care about my life i was like 17 yeah and so and would climb onto the roof and we like weren't even doing drugs or anything or drinking we were just like sitting there just like wow like look at all this and then um at another point I started dating someone who liked to go to like um, suburbs, you know, those suburbs where it's like these little communities where they like start building all these houses that look the same, but mm, they're like yeah, two little feet of little whatever. And so they would have all these just like houses just that like were half built drop. or like almost built all the way, but like they would be, you could like open up a window and get into them or like, you yep. know, lock your fucking windows y'all. And so we would do that. And so it'd be really cool. And there was a lot of houses with like secret like little closets and nooks that like we're like oh wow look at that that's so fun Mm -hmm. i love it but yeah and so they're (laughs) doing that she's going through this secret nook she's seeing that it was basically rory's favorite hiding spot because there's toys she sees that you know she's like go and get rory's toy from april and she puts it and fits it right in the same spot that it used to be because the dust had settled everywhere else but then there was this clear like Mm -hmm. octagonal um shape on the Base, which matched yeah. up perfectly with his little music box. And then while she was fucking, ugh, while she was back there, she just starts pulling on this rope. And I was like, girl, that's yeah. a sturdy rope. Like, and then I, the, would I, not be I already on thought that. like there's going to be a body at the end of that. But she ends up pulling which, up this rope and it's a news. That must have been the one that the mom hung herself in. Yeah. Because she probably was very upset after mm-hmm. killing Rory and like went through his hideout and then just like jumped off. Could have. That's what I imagine. Mm-hmm. And then since it was in the walls, no one ever found it. Mm-hmm. I just imagine her little bones were down there at the bottom too. You're imagining a lot. I, w- I want them you to are. be there. <laughs> and so that's whenever fucking Lorraine falls through this freaking floor. Ah, and I love it. the shot of it like going around. Cause she's like, it's like goes in a circle around her as she's falling down. And then I put Q one of my favorite scenes mm-hmm. and fucking Eddie boy is freaking out. He's mm-hmm. like, Lorraine. Which, yeah. I mean, I would be too. Yeah, and he <laughs> runs down, obviously, all the ways they go to the cellar because she's falling through all the way and gone to the cellar. I feel like he never actually makes it down to no, the cellar. No, not because I feel like we're seeing what's happening to her, and I feel like we see it in our time frame, but in the time that it has like taken him to go down there, I feel like this is all happening in a matter yes, of seconds. You know is. what I mean? Yeah. I definitely think it yeah. is. And I this is another place where I really love the contrast of the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Because as we're following Ed down, he's like screaming. The music is so loud. It's like heavy strings. Mm-hmm. And then we pan back to her and it's like dead silent. Yeah. And then you just hear weeping. The weeping. And she's like, she knows what she did. And all of a sudden the music box goes like, mm-hmm. and then so she's like, Ooh. so she picks it up being like, can I see the mom too, basically. And she does. She sees, like, in the reflection, she sees a mom or this woman who we saw in the picture earlier was the walkers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, was leaning over Rory with a knife in her head saying, like, she made me do it. Mm -hmm. And then she looks behind her, not there. And then she looks back in it again. And then she pulls it down and she's She's like, in front of her. Look what she made me do. She made me do it. Yeah. Um, And and that was good. Yeah. And again, I, I liked her face there because it looked believable. Mm-hmm. And then right as that, all that's happening, because she starts, her head like creaks. And it sounds like a rope. Mm-hmm. Also like going like. Yeah. The way that her head's turning and she's like. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And then you see the feet go. Boom. And they fall. And so it's like someone essentially dangling in front of where Lorraine is. But she's under a table. So you only see the bottom of the feet. Yep. And it's the same feet that we saw earlier hanging from the tree. Mm-hmm. Whenever mm-hmm. Lorraine first saw Bathsheba's like entity yeah and i just i again love the abrupt like stop because it was moving so quickly and then it was like stop yeah. moving and then it slow turns until the feet are facing her like as if she was facing her head mm-hmm. on and i'm like hell fucking nah no nah, no that is fucking scary and so then she's essentially freaking out in her own quiet solitude as this is happening. And then that's whenever we have as as well at the, at the upside of everything, this, the, as she goes up, the crosses start turning upside down. Yeah. Right? And yeah. as she's running up, her locket gets 
someone something oh, grabs right. her locket. That's right. It's not even caught on anything. There is like it pulls her lock. A force pulls her locket yeah, away from her until it pops off of her neck, and it's like, uh oh, this locket mm-hmm. has a photo of Judy, Judy. her mm-hmm. daughter, as we saw earlier when it was gifted to her, and it's like a direct link. Basically, they're matching sets. And yeah. so it's like, Ugh, poor Judy. Um, but then, yeah, she runs up. The crosses are starting to fall. And she's, as soon as she gets up, she says, she possesses the mother to kill the child. She's feeding on Carolyn. Yeah. And Carolyn's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> she's and, like, oh, shit, I've been found out already. <laughs> and then we have Nancy's hair getting pulled up. And she just gets, starts getting yeeted across boom, the room. Boom. Like, just. She, out of all everybody, Nancy Poor just gets girl. the worst out of it. Yeah, I know. she gets she's fucking thrown around. thrown around. Um, and then everybody's freaking out, and so they all start leaving. Obviously, at this point, because it's just like this is a lot. And Lorraine came in. Sorry, the way they get her to stop being. T- Lorraine cuts off like a fuck ton of her of hair. Of her hair, yeah. And it's just like a patch. So the homegirl's gonna need to get a bob after this. Poor like, thing. <laughs> it was like a lot more than like a bob, five Caitlin. Inches. She's gonna need like Shave years of therapy, but she doesn't because oh, yes. they end up writing books. But she's anyways. gonna have to dye her hair multiple times to cope with the trauma. Yeah, they, and then shave um, her head at least twice. They end up leaving. Um, and that's whenever they um start. I think at this point, the rain sees like a vision of Judy. Yeah, um, she hears Judy's voice saying, "Mom." Yeah, exactly, and that's whenever she sees her drowning in the water at and the lake at this, the house, and yeah. so it's like a sign to her that like Judy's in danger. The floating through the river there, uh, mm-hmm. it looked very, you know, like when the when Meg is floating in the water in Hercules. Yeah, yeah, I it looked that. like yeah. that because the river of how of souls like or whatever how mm-hmm. drawn out her mm-hmm. like. Uh, fucking nightgown was. Yeah, she just looked like she was going into the souls. Yeah, give me the Lord of the Rings. Like oh, whenever yes. Frodo was by that river, that one marsh, mm-hmm. marsh. Yes, mm-hmm. and all the souls are in there. Uh, and so, yeah, oh, they, that's such a that's that scene could be in a horror film. It could. I love the Lord of the Rings. Me too. But anyways, they are. Um, <laughs> the parents arrive to a motel. They're all trying to get settled in. This is obviously, their, obviously their new digs because like their house is infested. Um, and so the uh, Warrens get to show like photos and all the stuff that has happened in the proof to the priest because they're basically to like approve. He the looked exorcism. at Drew yeah. and was like. You got all that right, and they're yeah. like, "We're gonna, we, we go into the priest right yeah. now." And so they're getting they're like, it they fast tracked. That. Yeah, um, and the priest is just like, "I'm gonna fast track this and get it approved myself because, because it has it's to obviously, come from the Vatican, exactly." And obviously, it's crucial because get your they rush are, order exorcism here, exactly because they're you know in dire need of it, or else someone's life is on the line. Mm-hmm. And so that's whenever um, um, something is up with Judy. Yeah, we pan to mm-hmm. Judy's room. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to find things the little, that I have the, in horror films. Mm-hmm. The little lamb figuring slash planter mm. sitting right behind where her locket is. I have one that is almost identical to it that I picked up the other day. Um, but anyways, yes, the locket starts going. Spinning around. And that's whenever she also gets tugged. Just how like Christine got tugged. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, oh, what's going on? So she gets woken up. She goes out of her room and she's like trying to call out for her mom and dad. But obviously they're not there. And that's whenever she goes downstairs. And I love the pan of like the shot of it going upstairs while she's all the way up there. And so Mm -hmm. she ends up going downstairs. We see demon doors open. The demon door room is open. And that's whenever she's like. And we see. I don't think we see that Anna. She doesn't see that Annabelle's gone. But we see that Annabelle Mm -hmm. is missing from The, the cabinet. The cabinet. Yes. Yeah. And then she goes back into the hallway and the lights start shutting off up the stairs and then this darkness just overtakes Mm -hmm. the house. And that's such a cool scene. Fucking terrifying. The lights go out, yeah. So, 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 so scary. And now, a word from our sponsors. And then... There's this loud banging happening on the door just from down uh, that like the Judy locks herself in. Because obviously once the house starts overtaking, like the darkness is like, I would be like "Ah!" freaking out. So she runs into their study, I believe is what it is. Yeah, very office giving like. Yeah. And that's whenever we see there's a rocking chair in the corner and it's rocking back and forth. And we see Beth Sheba with Annabelle on her lap. She's brushing her hair. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, Annabelle's hair is in braids. No. Yeah. How are you brushing a but braid? She's kind of brushing the back of it. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> just right down the little part. <laughs> um, and so she's there and she's freaking out as anyone should. And that's whenever at this time, it's like everything's happening at the same time. We have Ed and Lorraine getting home and they're and like, oh like, my God, wrong. you know, yeah, something's wrong. And they run inside and that's whenever they're screaming for her. And that's whenever we have the grandma like at the door trying to like bang to get in. And she's like, let me in. And the rocking chair turns on its own. Mm -hmm. The rocking chair <laughs> does turn on its own. And so that's scary. by the time they get it open, it, gets thrown at the door frame and they like just save her just Nearly in time to like it. yeah get her before it hits her before it hits anybody else and it obviously breaks into like a little bitty pieces yeah it's splinters yeah it was uh, yeah that part was very unsettling mm -hmm. just like my fear of wheelchairs yeah. um empty rocking chairs also <laughs> add that to me. the list <laughs> yeah uh, the unlocked other day, new fear yeah the other day i had to stay in a house for a bachelorette mm -hmm. and of course i got the room that had a fucking just rocking chair in it oh. and it's in this old old house and oh. i was like i can't look at that rocking chair oh, i was I'm like sorry. i had to turn on my side and i also slept with my airpods in all night mm, i like rocking chairs I like them too, and I totally would own one because mm -hmm. I've tried to get a Bentwood rocker. Before. Well, not tried to. I could have easily gotten one. Yeah, and but the setting, the ambiance. Yeah. yeah. I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, that. this is scary. Um, also, when they were in the demon room, I was like, why does this low key look like my house? <laughs> all the little trinkets little and bit. everything. I was like, oh, all the dolls. We have all the. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but at the same time that all this is happening, um, apparently, Carolyn left the motel with Christine in April because and she we smelled have, like rotting meat. And she smelled like rotting meat. We have Ed and Lorraine getting this phone call from the family. Um and so then they're like, snap, we gotta all meet back at the house. So apparently Lorraine's like, let's finish this together. Yeah, because that's whenever it is like, I'm gonna leave you here, but she's like, No, we didn't get called together by God to like write a book. We got yeah, called together to banish demons. That's right. Mm -hmm. They really lean into that because yeah. there's another mention of it too yeah. later. And so that's whenever they all arrive back to the house with the cop. The Brand cop shoots, the door, shoots open. the door open. He blows through. Carolyn is just screaming. That's whenever we get downstairs and already Drew is holding her back and then that's like really chaotic and they're all she's like, like rabid. she's rabid literally she's and they're all Christine trying to like with a of scissors mm -hmm. they as in, they do end up getting christine away from her and at the same time april's kind of witnessing everything and she's just no, freaked april's, out in the kitchen or something like that right april's missing right we well before that we did oh. see her before that she was kind of like but by the time then, christine gets upstairs april's gone exactly and they and can't then find her they can't find her and so then drew is on the lookout for her um after he hides christine in the car but that's whenever mama is still in the basement. They've got her finally tied down with the sheet over her and tied onto a tear. But before that, they try to take her out to take her to the priest. Oh, and that's she true. can't cross no, the threshold. She can't, that's right. She, she can't leave the house. Burning up. Yeah. Like the way that her skin just starts like melting. It was like, mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, gross. But yes, yeah, she's drugged back. And she's then bound she's, by the house. She's yeah. dragged back down. Mm -hmm. Like, she is pulled. Oh, from she them. doesn't want to go down there because yeah. she's also screaming out. At one point, Carolyn actually comes to the body and she's like screaming for Roger. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so that's whenever they do end up going back down there and they tie her down. And, and they she get gets her. a big old bite of Brad's face. Mm, that's true. Yep. And so that's whenever um, all that's happening. It's very chaotic. They end up getting to tie her down and stuff. And they're like, well, what do we do? What do we do? And then it's like, I'm going to have to do the exorcism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, but I want you to leave to Lorraine. And she was mm -hmm. like, absolutely nah. not. And I was like, One yo, this time. is yeah. not the time for y'all to be fighting about her leaving. Like, yo, clearly you're in this together. She's already fucking here. Just let's do this shit. Yeah. And, oh, and then, oh, Ooh, so it was good. She was like, I'm going to go get the book. We yep. follow Lorraine upstairs and we get this upside down shot as she's coming up. And then it like pans up mm -hmm. and then we get to see then it, she's running out the door, but it's still a long shot. And we get uh, Drew running upstairs, still looking for April. Yeah. And it was just, it was such a very good shot. A very shot. nice cinematic And it gave me moment. very mm -hmm. as above, so below. Oh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Love it. But then they're back downstairs and, uh. Yeah, they're starting the exorcism. Yeah, they're starting the exorcism. And he starts speaking, her speaking Latin. With holy water. Mm -hmm. She go cry, cry. They, um, she, she really starts going crazy because at this point she also um, starts spouting out all these, like, you know, demonic, whatever language it is. 
that she is speaking in tongues and she then starts um at one point the chair flips upside down especially mm-hmm. after it starts lifting up and while and all it this goes is to the happening ceiling. Mm-hmm. the birds are like bombarding the That's houses right. and cars they're like getting through the chaotic. window in the car yeah birds are making it downstairs into the cellar mm-hmm. and it's it was so wild to me how the whole time like while this is happening and yeah she's like fucking turn it upside down and stuff yeah. the whole she's house spitting up like blood is coming out of their body yeah. like at this point it seems like carolyn is long gone you know yeah and there's a lot it was crazy how the whole house seemed to be shaking but like it was only in the basement mm-hmm. so then upstairs while drew is looking for april, april. it's completely still yeah and like, which he does end up locating her underneath the kitchen yes and which he gets makes the mistake of, of screaming it that. out loud yeah after they were able to kind of calm down carolyn in the spirit of Bathsheba. because yeah she kind of after she flips upside down and bangs the chair like mm-hmm. on the roof um and whenever she falls it splinters and she's like free which is yeah. bad but Very Roger's much. like yelling at her. I feel like she was kind of shocked a little bit, mm-hmm. like almost brought back to reality. Mm-hmm. And Roger's like, let her go. And then she yeah. just turns and she's like, she's already gone. Mm-hmm. And now you're all going to die. Yeah. And so that's whenever <laughs> Drew gives up April's location and she goes running like a little beast through the little under layer. Didn't even stutter. Yeah. She was just like, boom. Goes away. And then I'm like, oh, shit. She's going to kill April. Fuck it. But Damn it, Drew. That was not your best <laughs> As soon as she ends up getting to April, everybody else kind of gets up to her, too. And that's whenever it kind of starts becoming, like, you know, the power of, like, love and light and, like, the mom's, you know, memory love. yeah, of the three. beach. Um, prevails. Prevails. Because then Lorraine starts telling her, like, remember that memory, that day you said you never forget. Like, you love your family. And so basically that love ends up saving Carolyn from the spirit of Bathsheba and Lorraine ends up banishing Bathsheba into hell. Yeah. Yeah. And Ed is all the time. He's like, he calls her by the name. And at that moment, Bathsheba like turns to look and you're getting Bathsheba's face, not no longer Carolyn's. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, he says like, I like command you to leave this body. And she's like touching her on the head through the floor whole it's a lot. thing and yeah it's a lot of demon and her face as she cries is like so fucking disturbing mm-hmm. as carolyn's like sitting there like <laughs> it's very real yeah very uh she deserved and something Maybe, and i don't know if it's that. an oscar but something <laughs> for it yeah no just the makeup like her lips look mm-hmm. so dry i was like girl we need to get you some mm-hmm. we need to get you some glossier well, like, i liked especially to appointment be, exactly because we then have them pulling her out of the house and she ends up coming to like when the light hits her and i love how like the sun's like healing her. healing her because then she that spirit is no longer a part of her and she's unbound from the house and, and she's, she's like able i'm to so leave. happy yes. right now and she's hugging her daughter because she's like i'm so sorry i love you like and i'm sure her the level of drama that these kids like, are gonna have to go through because even april was just like yeah i mean she honestly <laughs> she seemed was pulling away from okay. her okay i would have been like no i mean if i was five or whatever the fuck she was i would have been like i'm never going near that woman you just again. tried to kill me <laughs> yeah yeah hard fucking pass yeah and i'm like april is forever traumatized but yeah essentially it's over because they literally are like it's over but actually in reality it wasn't really over because the parents were really you know this all happened over a decade for yeah. them so it wasn't um, like they just moved in and mm-hmm. this is the oh. point where brad is on the porch yeah and drew comes up and he goes did a draft do that to your face and mm-hmm. he says i'd take a guy with a gun any day <laughs> And so also to just to highlight like the real story between what happened in the movie, like apparently with the parents after they did have their interaction with the Warrens, like apparently it was not necessarily a an exorcism as much as this was as more so like a seance for them to talk with the spirit that mm-hmm. was possessing Carolyn here. And so, cause it wasn't like a, she possessed her and that was it. It was like, a, it was happening like intermittently, mm-hmm. but also because the family still chose to fucking live there yeah. after all these years of shit happening. Um, I mean, what and, can you do? And after they had their last interca- interaction, which was this story with them, they like cut ties with them and were just like never talked to them ever again, which was like probably a few years before still they moved out before oh, the so 80s wild. in the house. Yeah. I wonder why. Um, but yeah, apparently also whenever they were doing this exorcism, uh, in the basement, 
Lorraine still hasn't divulged necessarily everything that she's seen or, you know, quote unquote, has seen with what happened that night because it truly like was the worst thing she's ever seen in her life. One of those kind of the one with the parent family or the one with the guy that fucked her up. That exorcism with the nun. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it, that's the same kind of storyline. No, but oh. where this same thing, like where she, but the she one saw the parent one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. I see things that people shouldn't see or hear about, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh. But then, so April returns the little locket. The Warrens get home. Mm-hmm. They place the music box in their demon room, and then basically, like as soon as they get home, Lorraine's like, "I'm gonna call the priest." Let him know that let him know what happened. And then she comes yeah. back and she's like, the Vatican approved the exorcism. And they're like, good timing. Huh, right. <laughs> and then she says, hey, the priest wants to meet about a case in Long Island, though. And I said, hello, Amity Bell. Yeah. Which is a perfect lead up to mm-hmm. the fact that we have a live show coming up. We do. And we will be covering the Amity Bell horse, horse story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll be watching the original film with uh, Poultry Gals on October 22nd. So if you're listening to this episode today, then that is going to be the following weekend. Yep. Um, I believe. It's coming up. Actually, no. That would be. I can't do math. It would be that Saturday. This Saturday. This is Saturday. We have a live show. And so it'll be at Nexus if you're coming here in out. Waco. And we'll, like we said, we'll be with the Poulter Gals. They'll be covering the actual story and we'll be covering uh, the movie. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be pretty fun and really fun night there's yeah. gonna be drinks there's gonna be ghouls there's gonna be gals there's gonna be us Ooh, dress in costume yeah dress in costume cute Come dress out. is your favorite horror movie mm-hmm. yeah we're um, super excited but yes um, it is and then the movie ends with a quote from ed does. the music box playing and zooming in on the mirror and then we get an abrupt cut to black with photos of the royal families and the headlines involving mm-hmm. the warrens and uh super cool i think it's a great tie Ending to, to the finish movie. up the movie yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh so any fun facts or anything you know about the film? Um, I started going into like what actually happened with the family and stuff. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this stuff kind of made it into the movie. Some of it like um, so when they first move into that house, essentially the girls were the first ones to experience like any kind of uh, poltergeist or interaction. And what they did was um, <clears throat> at first the spirits were like more nurturing. So mm-hmm. like, there was a spirit that was like kind of like a nanny to them, like almost it's a mother. Yeah. That was um, taking care of them and like putting them in the bed at night. Mm-hmm. And they said essentially they could tell that it wasn't their mom because at first they thought it was, but then they could tell it wasn't because their mom smelled like ivory soap, like, like mm-hmm. washed, mm-hmm. like clean. Ivory but, soap was a very specific but smell. that the um ghost smelled like roses and like lavender hmm. like fl- floral type of scents that's sweet mm-hmm. um but then it all started changing after a while um and they got like the mom flipping over in the chair from andrea's account because she said that she had gone at one point when they were doing like a seance down there and she saw a chair going up upside down and ending up on the ceiling oh. um and so that's how they tie that into the movie as well that's good um, i like it but no do you have any other fun facts or something that was tied into it lol it was supposed to be a pg-13 rating so mm-hmm. that's funny mm-hmm. um but uh ryan gosling uh, his he's featured on the soundtrack so For that's what? fun. I guess he has an indie rock band called mm. like Dead Man's Bones. And they are like, so Ryan Gosling sitting there singing oh, in cool. the Conjuring soundtrack, which I think is cool. Screenings in the Philippines were blessed by priests. Basically like they were beforehand. Like, yeah. yeah. They're, they will have priests come into like the whole movie theater and be like, you're you going to watch blessed. this, but like, yeah, yeah. but we're going to bless you first. So you don't uh, get possessed. Yeah. Um, the composer, the film's composer, played Bathsheba. Mm. Yeah. So Joseph Bishara wow. has become, I hope that's how you say his name, has become mm-hmm. something of a maestro when it comes to the horror film soundtrack. Um, but he's, like, he did some of the VHS viral, Tale of Halloween, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but he's been in a lot of James Wan films. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, like, played the lipstick face demon in both Insidious and Insidious oh, Chapter okay. 3. Mm-hmm. Um, he that's was the one a, that looks like uh, Darth Maul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I couldn't take that movie seriously. <laughs> um, and a demonic figure and the haunted doll, like in Annabelle, he was one of the demonic figures in there um, and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. 
And then the current owners of the house in the film, at least when this was article was written, sued. They sued James oh, Wan really? and like DreamWorks For or whatever the fuck it was. Um, basically, because it has listed a lot of like people wanting to like get attention from it or whatever. Uh, well, they had a lot of vandalism. Mm, mm-hmm, so mm. after so this article, this is a quote. It says, after claiming they had experienced numerous acts of vandalism, been subject to threats of violence, found several objects affiliated with satanic cults placed there since the film hit the screams, Sutcliffe and Helfrich decided to sue director Juan, studio Warner Brothers, sorry, and various other producers. And the couple who bought the property back in 87, 16 years after the events in the movie took place, have also named five individual trespassers and 500 interlopers, referenced as John and Jane Doe in the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Um, but That's basically, that the f- they didn't. They were like upset that they didn't <laughs> allow them to know their plans of making this film like yeah. beforehand. And then whenever they went to buy the house, the parents at least they were not notified of it being haunted. And that's because in Rhode Island, so there's certain states that have like there's one case that I know two girls one ghost covered recently. I also listened to a Cabinet of Curiosities by Aaron mm-hmm. Mankey. Um, on this same house recently that basically this house was haunted and this family like lived there like got along with the ghost basically just fine for years mm-hmm. and then whenever they went to sell the house the guy who bought it was basically like what the fuck you didn't tell me it was haunted even yeah. though she clearly had mentioned it and then he basically was just like oh calling the ghostbusters because he was buying it in the 80s and yeah. then it set off this whole like Thing of when you have to legally tell someone people like what happened haunted. in the house yeah. yeah and so but you don't have to tell you don't even have to tell if someone's been murdered in the house half the time mm-hmm. if it's been like some A states it's one time. year mm-hmm. some cases like states it's three years which i'm just like Ugh. four mm-hmm. years ago is still pretty recent like if someone well once a murdered house. always a murdered like it doesn't matter yeah. what when it happened it and just happened sometimes you only have to like say if it's a violent crime or you only have to say if someone asks. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on your state. So whenever you're buying a home, maybe look oh, into yeah. your real estate law. See if my, the they house have that to I grew up in, um, that my parents still live in, um, someone died in it. Um, fun. Yeah. It's not fun. I'm sorry. That's just fun. one guy that we know that died in it. He died of like a heart attack or whatever, mm-hmm. like quarter age, and he passed away there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's funny. I don't know. It's funny to think about. My family home growing up, it was like a hundred year old. Mm-hmm. log cabin it's been demolished now mm. but that that's the one that had the cemetery on the property but then mm. i remember no oh, yeah it's possessed yeah my co- cemetery okay possessed. there's two cemeteries and then my great uncle dick <clears throat> like died of a massive brain aneurysm in there mm-hmm. and i remember my f- fucking parents told me that and i had to like sleep in the room that he died in that was my room oh no and they were like yeah, your great uncle Dick died in here, and they were like, of a brain aneurysm. And I didn't know what that is. And they were like, basically, it's when like blood comes out of all of your like orifices and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I, well, they, they, I'm sure they said something about like a brain, like something in your brain, like snapping. Mm-hmm. But they told me like blood like came out of, I'm like five. I was five. His eyes or when something. Yeah, five yeah. or less when I lived in that house. So I just imagine the walls being painted with blood. Oh, no. Like, I imagine he, like, went. <laughs> Very uh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, ah. Anyways. Yeah. Boo um, time. Boo rating. <laughs> boo rating. It's boo rating time. It's, is it boo time? Boo time. Ba-da, ba-da, da, da, da. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I feel like. I want to give it more than a 4.5. 4. 4. 4.8. A 4.8. Why is that? Almost a solid five. Mm-hmm. Um, It's just a really good story. I feel like James Wan did a really good job directing everything, the like way everything was shot, the way that the sound was like put in, the way that some shots would like fade from like color into like grayscale um the amount of effort that was put into tying in quote unquote what was a true ghost story that happened in real life with like fictional hollywood and like tying everything in a i it was just genuinely 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 a fun ride yeah i enjoyed it i thought it was a very good story i 
liked all the effects that happened with the family. I felt that progressively worked because it wasn't like everything all at once. You started getting like the slight little nudges that they were feeling at the house with doors opening and then like maybe just a clock or a smell and then like someone started getting pulled and then it came to like a hard tug and then it just all built it all built up into them meeting with the Warrens and then we got Drew which was just like such a nice plot you know five out ten out of five boost ten out of five so Drew really had a big part of this of Shannon (laughs) Gook um and then we had Everything tying in all together and then now knowing now how we have the whole universe that is the conjuring cinematic, whatever it is, and it ties in everything really nicely. So I don't know. I give it a 4.8 because it's also just like, I feel like if you, if you have a friend that you meet, that's just like, I don't like scary movies, but you're just like, just watch a scary movie. You can watch this one. Watch the conjuring. It's not like it's, I, I feel like it's a happy medium. I feel mm-hmm. like it's not like anything that's like just over like scary or over some someone who can't handle it. Like it's the perfect type of scare for someone. You got a few jump scares, you got a good solid story and you actually care about the characters because you start to care about the kids and the yeah. family and like you start to care about the Warrens. And then it's also like also gives this trope of like you have Lorraine who's just like super badass, super hu- like powered clairvoyant Mm -hmm. who's just coming in to save the day and um you get the whole lore of like the evil room and it's it's two almost it's pretty it's almost two hours it's right under two hours but like 51 minutes yeah but it it, uh i watch this on hbo max same and it doesn't feel like almost two hours yeah Um, you can lose yourself in it Mm -hmm. it's very fast yeah Mm -hmm. So well paced and a good progression as you go throughout. It's, it's just a good spooky movie. Smacking you in the face from the get. But mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. I'm going to give it a five. I give it a five. I love this movie. This is You know what? Movie. I changed my rating. I give it a five too. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it sounded like you wanted to give it a five. Um, this is one that I know I said before. I m- think I mentioned how like my dad and I would watch this like. Oh, yeah. For Any Christmas. like holiday. Yeah. We were together. Basically, we'd watch this. And even at the time, my stepsister was pretty young and she would watch it with us like we were mm-hmm. kind of family like dad stepsister uh kara and my brothers were like we'd all just sit there and watch conjuring together yeah and it was like every year and i've seen this movie a billion times mm-hmm. like probably at least I, I'm, I'm gonna say like at least 25 sometimes and i love it still it's and so it good. Still freaks me out. Yeah, same. To no. this day, even me watching it by myself the other night, I was just like, "Oh, this is pretty spooky." Yep, and mm-hmm. I mean, The Conjuring Two also did a good job of that. Now, I don't love that one quite as much. I do still enjoy it, but like recently, and I know I mentioned this. Conjuring before, Two actually, I like more than I like this one. Really? Yeah. Ah, uh, the nun gets a little cheesy at sometimes for me, but mm-hmm. that like old man, the my house, I oh, love yeah. him, and he's fucking creepy. Yeah, and there's a there's a few moments in there where I had to, I was trying to watch it alone one day and it was kind of like a stormy day and I like turned it on and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. And then I had to kind of turn it off because I was like, I'm a little too freaked out right now because right. all the little toys and stuff in the house looked so much like mine. Mm, so I, I like, can see that. Yeah. Ah! I was like, I feel a little too in the movie yeah. right now. I'm going to have to step out. Um, but yeah, I, I love this film. The acting was great. Storyline was great. Even though it was embellished, um, I still is. think that it was a wonderful, it was like such a strong, strong, strong start for this franchise. Yeah. And which I think is why I was so disappointed with the devil made me do it because this film, it really like it sunk its teeth into me. The moment I saw it, I was like, nah, well, even if you didn't, I think I saw it multiple times in theaters. Well, even if you didn't, like we were just talking about how, like, I really liked the second one better. Um, if you didn't like the second one better, it, the second one was still a good movie. Oh, it was and still the, fantastic. And I still loved it. the third one just kind of was a letdown from those two. By the time, like when I said, like, but I didn't like it I as also, much. I'm talking like 4.8. I'm, I'll like, be I honest still with love you. It. I also haven't seen the third one since the first time I watched it. Yeah, because I, I was be so disappointed to... by it. So oh, yeah. maybe with the second watch, I can appreciate it more. I don't know. I don't but think so. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I could. Yeah. But yeah, so if. Five, solid five. Five. Solid, solid five, five for, for The Conjuring 1. 2013's mm-hmm. The Conjuring by James, directed yes. by James Wan. Phenomenal film. Thank you, guys. Love, yeah. love, love, You love, should go love check it. it out. You should. And you should also check us out on October 22nd. 
Mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. nexus and we'll be posting that on our social media as well Mm -hmm. so keep keep your eyes pills if you're in the waco area and if you've come by and see us made it this long throughout this episode please check out roadmedianetwork.com because there's a lot of nice episodes on there yep um from all the you can listen to us you can listen to poltergals who will also be there with us exactly on there and yeah you can find any of us there or on any of the like slew of podcasting platforms the biggest two being spotify and apple and Mm -hmm. wherever you do listen please don't forget to mm, rate review like and subscribe that's right because that's the (laughs) only way we can get ahead in this world and if you want to tell us your thoughts on the conjuring tell us what you think about next week's films being mama or conjuring Conjuring two two. and then yeah next week's mama and trick or treat. Mm-hmm. Um, then you can reach out to us on our social one social media platform, being Instagram at Boo Bays Podcast. That's B O O B A E S because we are your Boo Bays, not your Boo Babes. That's right. Mm-hmm. And until Friday for the Conjuring Two. Mm-hmm. Bye Bays. Bye Bays. has been a Rogue Media Podcast.